feature presentation. Uh, thank you so much for, for taking the time uh, to talk to me. I wanted to just quickly ask you about going from the stage to the screen and, and going from being a theater director to a film director and getting your initial thoughts on a screenplay that has been written by three first timers as well. Hmm. Well, regarding film and theater, I would say, um, you know, the process of filmmaking and the process of making a play are in many respects radically dissimilar. <laughs> the way you go about putting it together. Right. But part of the discovery of this process has been that the core impulses at the center of both, for me, feel completely aligned. Um, the storytelling impulse, <laughs> the primacy of visual composition, the centrality of the conversation with an actor, um, those core channels <laughs> are completely connected. So for me, uh, the process is ultimately felt much more aligned than I might have imagined from a structural perspective. Right. Did, was there a scene or a moment in the in the script that really stuck out to you? Because it didn't dawn on me until after watching the movie. And what I was really impressed by is that it's all in the moment. It's all mm. in the present. There's no flashback to you know moments of the character's past. It feels just completely lived in. Mm. Um, I'm glad that was your experience. Um, uh, you asked if there was a moment. Yeah, in the an initial yeah. scene that stuck I, out to you. Sure. I mean, I guess what I would say, per your emphasis on the lived experience, I was struck upon first encountering the first draft of this script by the care, the patience, and the attention to detail. Uh, afforded what might present as a seemingly small step of progress, <laughs> um, uh, but in fact contains, um, you know, complexity. <laughs> uh, the, the, the process of beginning to cope and beginning to heal is sometimes charted in steps that appear small, but uh, are ultimately, I think, quite meaningful. <laughs> Right. It, it takes time. And the film knows that in a way that was so refreshing because it doesn't exploit the rehabilitation process. Mm. It's not sort of an overnight success. And watching it, it really does feel like that. I wanted to ask about the production design and working with someone like Jack Fisk, mm. who's worked with people like Terrence Malick and David Lynch. I mean, he was in Eraserhead and specifically Lindsay's childhood home. Mm. How long did it take to find that place? And was it specifically detailed in the script? And was it easy to kind of create that vision of something that has so much history? Mm. I'm so glad you asked about Jack. Um, he's a living legend. <laughs> And I, I, um, I'm still in a kind of state of disbelief that I had the good fortune on my first film to work with someone of his experience, caliber, insight, humanity, and wisdom. Uh, Jack Fisk taught me more than I could ever distill into words. Certainly also not in a brief interview, but even right. if I had a, a very long format about Filmmaking, about the kind of filmmaker I want to be, candidly, about the kind of person I want to be. And you are right, he has worked on films 20 times the scale of this one, with directors who are twice my age. And yet he approached every aspect of this process, the filmmaking process, his collaboration with me, with such endless rigor, curiosity, joy. <laughs> um, uh, it was a, a true education <laughs> in the kind of boundless imaginative possibility of making a film. And as you also identify, he was so invested in the inner lives of these characters, in honoring the specific, rich, varied, history of New Orleans, a singular American city. And he is also a person who has 
a kind of remarkable awareness that inside every image, there is that which we read cerebrally, but that which is also penetrating at the level of the unconscious. Um, uh, that, that was an important education for me as well. Right. And I mean, again, like it is such a beautiful looking movie, but it portrays New Orleans in a way that doesn't necessarily feel cliched or traditional from, a, you know, a tourist point of view, which I think is really important as well. And I wanted to ask you about the cinematography because mm -hmm. it reminded me a little bit of something like Paris, Texas, in mm -hmm. a way, um, and working with uh, Diego Garcia. Is it something that you kind of enjoy to do like filming in maybe sort of the moment or is it something where you prefer to storyboard beforehand? Uh, Diego is uh, such a, rem a remarkable visual artist. Um, he sees equal poetry in the human face and in a swimming pool. <laughs> right. Um, I would say that the process involved a shared preoccupation with careful, deliberate composition, and much like my collaboration with Jack, an investment in the way in which a composition communicates emotionally, cerebrally, and viscerally, <laughs> and how it operates at the level of the unconscious. The process did also involve a great deal of discovery, as I suspect all filmmaking inevitably does. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say in equal parts, there was enormous deliberate intentionality, but um, with a joyful spontaneity, um, as inevitably uh, images present themselves and they must be shot. <laughs> right, exactly. You, yeah. Sometimes, you know, yeah. it's a little bit of both. It's just yeah. interesting to learn, you know, a, a filmmaker's process and whether or not, you know, they want to find, you know, the scene or the moment while they're shooting in the present tense or, you know, something where it's kind of prepared beforehand. It's always fascinating. I'd say it was absolutely both. Yeah. Um, I have to wrap with you, oh, um, but yeah. before <laughs> I do, I just wanted to quickly ask um, about the score as well, because mm -hmm. what I love about your filmmaking is that you're not afraid to sit in silence. You know, there are moments where the score is there and present, but it does feel mm -hmm. like, you know, there are moments of reflection. So I was wondering if that was something that was found in post-production or was that something discussed early on with, you know, in the script stage? I, um, uh, thank you. Those, those were such kind words. Um, uh, I did not begin my collaboration with Alex Summers until I had uh, essentially half of a first rough cut. He was in fact, one of the very first people who saw a rough incomplete cut of this film. And I sent it to him dry, no temp. And I was stunned by how immediately he keyed into this character's inner life. Uh, as you also identified, it was apparent to both of us immediately that score in this film should be used sparingly. Um, uh, you are right that my feeling is, uh, while score is, I think, critical in expressing this character's soul, honestly, silence also plays a critical role in this film. And I think we both wanted to respect that, carve that out, deploy it effectively, and likewise, um, diegetically, you know, New Orleans is, um, it is a place with such rich, varied musical history and sonic tapestries <laughs> in the cicadas and the trolleys and the whistles of the passing trains. And so, um, it was also important to me in collaboration with our amazing music supervisor, Susan Jacobs, and our music editor, Catherine Miller, to load the cracks of this film <laughs> with as varied a musical palette. Uh, drawn from the place as we could. And then likewise to work with our mixers, Skip Leaves and Chris Che, to honor all of those New Orleans sounds. That's amazing. I have to wrap with you, but thank you so much for taking the time to talk sure. to me. I could listen to you, you know, break down the process oh, all lovely. day. It's you're really, lovely. really wonderful. Such a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, and, and um, Good luck with your finger. Oh, yeah, yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So. May it heal quickly. <laughs>